Is reality something tangible or is it just a construction of our minds? Is it consciousness that creates our reality or is it the result of something outside of us? In the grand scheme of the universe, is our three-dimensional perspective really too limited? These are some of the questions you may ask yourself as you reflect deeply on the nature of reality. Our reality is just a perception. Through our five senses, we can only understand a mere construct of reality. The three-dimensional nature of our world limits our worldview, with the predominant paradigm of duality shaping all aspects of the physical and spiritual on Earth. Think about it. There are no absolute truths in this world. There are only different lenses of perception. Reality is a perception because its truth has validity only for you. This diversity of perspectives is what makes our world beautiful. But I believe there is something even more fundamental at play. At the heart of all notions of God and consciousness is the idea that we are all connected. As we search for answers at the most meticulous levels of our existence, we encounter the mystery of consciousness. At the most fundamental level of our being, reality is far from objective. Instead, it resembles a series of interwoven subjective experiences that nourish our consciousness. To understand how consciousness shapes reality, we must understand how particles behave at the most fundamental level of our existence. After all, there may be some truth in the old idea that objective reality is just a reflection of your internal states of consciousness. Your experiences are subjective. You interact with the world through the lens of your perception, resonating with its unique frequency infusing it with meaning and making your life real. Apart from our human form, we are the energy that sustains the structure of our existence. The discoveries of quantum physics offer various interpretations, but one truth prevails above all. We are all energy at the most fundamental levels of our existence. We exist as particles and waves, and within our consciousness is the power to shape our own reality. Consciousness, the essence of our existence, is our window to the world, offering both awareness and ignorance. In our daily lives, we often let more pass than we absorb, casting a veil over profound truths that could offer consolation and enlightenment. If only we possessed a higher consciousness, a higher perception, we could feel more at ease, in harmony with the complexities of existence. Our consciousness acts as a filter, examining the vastness of existence, distilling the profound from the mundane. Our senses allow us to perceive the world, but they have their limits. They can only grasp a fraction of reality. To overcome these limits, we have created tools that help us extend our reach beyond the limits of our natural perception. Consciousness is a complex concept that involves the ability to perceive, understand, and be aware of oneself and the world around us. Although science has made significant advances in understanding consciousness, there is still much debate and mystery surrounding this phenomenon. The idea that we are a small part of the universe is truly fascinating. The matter that makes up our bodies and everything around us is made up of atoms, these atoms are the same chemical elements found throughout the universe. On a fundamental level, we are made up of the same components as the stars, planets, and galaxies. Which leads me to believe that we are products of evolution, shaped by natural processes taking place throughout the cosmos. At the deepest level, all the particles and fields in the universe interact with each other according to fundamental laws. So, we are not separate from this interconnected system, but are an intrinsic part of it. Explaining that we are part of the universe involves recognizing our deep interconnectedness with the cosmos, both in terms of physical composition and natural processes. It's a perspective that reminds us of the humility and responsibility we have towards our planet, ourselves, and the universe as a whole. Humanity's rise to dominance of the Earth was driven by our unique ability to connect, 
a network of collective consciousness that allowed us to rise above all other species. Humanity is full of communities, each filled with individuals with unique talents. Some excel in the art of critical thinking, while others channel their creativity into masterpieces. But we all share fundamental qualities that shape who we are. In contrast to other creatures, we have the remarkable ability to shape our own destinies. We are like adaptable characters in the story of life, able to reshape ourselves as we see fit. In order to understand the universe and truly dive into the essence of life, we must be willing to let go of preconceptions. There is no need to perpetually pursue happiness or remain in a constant state of euphoria. The life we lead is shaped by our choices and the ego we have built up, even if we hesitate to acknowledge it. Day after day, we engage with the spectrum of human experience, sometimes inviting difficulties to taste the sweetness of satisfaction when the tide turns. The self exists in contrast to the other, just as white contrasts with black and death with life. Our existence can be perceived as fundamental, not as a mere accident, but as an integral part of the essence of the universe. When we move away from the constructs we have formed and the influences of our sensory perceptions, we begin to perceive reality in its raw form. But that's when a question arises. Do you define yourself as a passive victim of the world or an active participant in it? Love, in its essence, flourishes when we abandon the limits of the self. It is in this surrender that we reveal our innermost truths, dismantling the walls we have erected to keep our distance, one brick at a time. So try to imagine your life as an open book with pages waiting to be filled with love. But let's pause for a moment and consider how we define ourselves. If we limit our identity to our ego, to the choices we make voluntarily, we run the risk of becoming mere victims of circumstances. It's easy to feel that we were thrown into this world without asking. But there is another dimension to our existence, our involuntary actions. Do you consciously beat your own heart or does it beat for you? These actions occur effortlessly beyond our conscious control. We are fundamentally an alternative reality, just as Alan Watts pondered. Not a God in the traditional sense, but a divine essence within ourselves, the core, the essence of being. The paradox resides in the fact that we often forget this truth. We get lost in questions like, who am I? And why am I here? Or what is the purpose of all this? Our conscience, although a remarkable gift, can sometimes ignore essential truths. It tends to forget the deep source from which these questions arise. But within that same source, the answers remain dormant. It's as if our consciousness hasn't gone deep enough to discover the origins of these existential questions. Let's consider the brain for a moment. It is the tool that can propel us to explore the far reaches of the universe, places that exist only in our wildest dreams. In this vast exploration, we find the intersection of curiosity, awareness, and the mysteries that beckon us to explore the unknown. To truly understand the depth of this journey, we must embark on an exploration that begins within ourselves. We often limit our perception of ourselves, we see ourselves as separate, isolated human beings wandering around a planet we didn't choose. But in reality, each of us plays a role in this cosmic unfolding. The thing is, we often neglect our role in the grand design. The question then is, are you just a victim of circumstances, or are you, in essence, the world itself? No matter how strange it may sound, each person you meet is like a little package of the universe, a unique blend of elements carefully assembled over billions of years of cosmic engineering. But instead of embracing this deep connection, we tend to perceive ourselves as entirely separate entities, isolated from the cosmos. Our quest to understand the origins of the universe is actually the universe's quest to understand itself. To achieve this profound understanding, 
we must reformulate our mentality. For the truth is that we are not as distinct as we perceive ourselves to be. Look, we are like different reflections of a single consciousness, similar to different aspects of a precious jewel. Although our egos and personalities may differentiate us, a deep connection unites us all. Imagine the universe as a vast, interconnected forest. Each of us, like a twig or a leaf, contributes to the intricate connection of life. Our origins, like the roots of trees, are interconnected, coming from the same source. Our energy cannot disappear into oblivion. It only transforms from one form to another. There is a common fear that everything will cease to exist, but although your individual life may come to an end, your energy, the very essence of your being, continues on an eternal journey. Our mind sometimes tricks us into believing otherwise, putting us into a state where we perceive ourselves as the beginning and the end of everything. This illusion often leaves us dissatisfied and unhappy, but the truth is even deeper. You are, in essence, an eternal part of the continuous universe. Death, as we understand it, is not the end of your existence. It is the abandonment of your ego. The death of the ego means the complete dissolution of your subjective self-identity. Everything that you once believed defined you evaporates. You become an empty vessel, devoid of emotion and disconnected from the world around you. It's like stepping out of your own skin, becoming something separate from the self you've always known. In this deep state, you begin to perceive the world differently. You realize that things are, well, just words. Words are fragments of language that we create to make sense of the world around us. Our senses guide us through life, helping us navigate, but they don't give us explanations. We fill in the gaps with our interpretations. However, during the death of the ego, you disconnect from all this. Your consciousness rises to a level beyond words, beyond understanding. It's like experiencing a higher form of consciousness that defies all explanation. The death of the ego can be both frightening and enlightening. It's a paradox, a dance between pressure and liberation, light and darkness. It's as if you were deciphering life through the lenses of death. This experience makes you more sensitive to pleasure and pain. You find yourself rising and sinking simultaneously, pulled in all directions at the same time. But during the journey through the death of the ego, we come to a moment of acceptance. Although it often induces anxiety, it also offers a glimpse of a reality devoid of personal failings, daily thoughts, and responsibilities. It's as if time stops and your mind is free to perceive the world without judgment as an impartial observer, transcending the limitations of the self. On my journey, I've realized that once we've peeled back the layers, very little in everyday life really matters. Fear, in its essence, is often the result of our struggle. It's our difficulty in accepting life as it is that makes everything gravitate towards disorder. Forming an ego, in a way, is a journey towards disorder. It's like venturing deeper and deeper into your personal tunnel, distancing yourself from the collective human experience. But the death of the ego is a transformative moment. It's like coming out of that tunnel and recognizing that we are all interconnected, like an intricate network of tunnels that ultimately converge on the same destination. When the day comes and I leave this physical existence, my ego will fade into oblivion. But I will still persist in some way. It's like an hourglass with the sands of time slowly sinking to the bottom. Eventually, the sands will gather, marking the end of my personal journey. But the universe will intervene, turn the hourglass around, and what was once me will become something entirely new. So, dear friends, embrace the journey. Your friends, your thoughts, your interests, they are all pieces of your unique puzzle. The process doesn't have to be as painful as you maybe imagine. You can change who you are and how you are with surprisingly minimal effort. 
As we come to the end of this message, I want to leave you with a message to reflect on. Through our eyes, the universe is perceiving itself. Through our ears, the universe is listening to its harmonies. We are the witnesses through which the universe becomes conscious of its glory, of its magnificence. Alan Watts, I could leave you with even more messages that resonate with what we've discussed in today's video, but I think this affirmation from Alan Watts already sums it up. Thank you for embarking on this journey with me. If this video resonated with you, I invite you to like and subscribe to our channel. Share this video with others so they can benefit from this message. And don't forget to leave a comment below sharing your thoughts, reflections, and experiences. Thanks again for watching and for joining me. Take care and see you soon.